Hey folks, I'm Scott Carter with GatorZone.com. I'm here with colleague Chris Harry, and uh, we're here to talk about Florida at Kentucky Saturday night in a Rupp Arena. And Chris, that's the back end of really uh, Florida's toughest two-game road swing so far this season. They won at Tennessee Tuesday night, and a lot of people are still talking about Patrick Young's dive there late. But what else did the Gators do right up in Knoxville? Well, what they did right is they responded to a, a defensive effort in the first half that numbers-wise really wasn't very good. Tennessee shot 62.5% from the field, and yet Billy Donovan was okay with that because a lot of those points, they got most of their points on challenge two-point shots. They weren't bombing in threes. Uh, they weren't controlling the inside glass maybe like uh, Jarnell Stokes and Jerron Maven have, have the potential to, those big guys up front. But Florida responded at halftime. They were only down one point, and they didn't play well in the first half. They only shot 35% in the first half, but they came out and played their style of basketball, and they out-hustled Tennessee. They beat them on the offensive glass. The play by Patrick Young at the end of the game really defined that game because it was a 50-50 ball. It was an all-out hustle effort play that bought the Gators another possession, more time off the clock, free throws, and it really was a, a great finish too. It was a, a great win for Florida. They'd only won one time in the previous eight trips up to Knoxville. Yes, and they probably would not have gotten that win without Scotty Wilkins' play. He was, uh, he was excellent on Tuesday night. It's about the only way you can say it. Career-high 21 points. Well, I think six assists, and most impressive to me was no turnovers in 35 minutes. I mean, Chris, how, what, what's the level this guy's playing at right now? He also had four steals in the game <laughs> also, and, and three of them were at the beginning of the game to really set the tone for the game. But I tell you what, offensively, he was 6 of 17 from the field. Three-point range, he was 1 for 6. And yet, he was the best player on the court that night. I think there's some irony in there. The Tennessee Riders were saying the same thing. This guy's now a SEC Player of the Year candidate, but at the same time, he can get better. He knows he can be better on offense. He took some out of control shots, but he is driving the ball to the basket. That helps the Florida bigs. That helps things open up things on the outside. And the defense is always going to be good. You always know that he's going to set his jaw and guard the best guy on the other team. And obviously he's going to have to do that when the Gators go to Kentucky. He's going to have to be very, very good on the perimeter. And he's going to have to steady the Florida team. He's a great captain, a great leader, and if you watch in, uh, during dead balls, he's the one who's gathering them. He's the one that the Gators look to for leadership in those times. You know, speaking of Kentucky, I mean, this is why you love SEC basketball. Florida, Kentucky, Saturday night, ESPN, uh, ESPN game day is going to be there. Obviously, uh, a lot of attention is going to be focused on this game. Chris, what do you think the Gators need to do up in Lexington to come out with a win and you know, just keep the streak that they're on going. Well, they need to really keep their composure. They, they talked about that in the Tennessee game. It's talking about the first four to eight minutes, and, and yet it's, it's almost tenfold when you go play at Rupp Arena. You've been in there. When they go on some of those runs, it's just a crescendo. It's a wave. It's a thunderclap. All these cliches you want. You just got to withstand that stuff because it's coming. And when you got those players, and they are very, very talented players, and they're very young players, and they need this win. I'll be quite frank, they need this win worse than Florida needs the win because this will be a belief, a springboard kind of game for Kentucky. Florida will go there, they will try to play well, and they need to play well in an environment like that. But just like if they'd gone to Tennessee and lost, it's not the end of the world for this team. If they go there and not play well, it's not the end of the world for this team. Billy Donovan has his team locked in on the task at hand. Whatever happens Saturday night, win or lose, he will have them locked in on the next game because, as he says, what's happened to date, they're 22-2 and two right now. It doesn't matter what's happened to date. That's a snapshot of what's happened right now. It doesn't have anything to do with what will happen in the, in the, in the next game or the game after that. All right, guys, uh, Kentucky and Florida Saturday night, ESPN, uh, Rupp Arena. Chris is going to be courtside in Lexington. Uh, I'll be on my couch watching, and we hope you guys are uh, watching too, and uh, will join us next time here on GatorZone.com.